So it's been about three or four days now since the first four Pacific starter weapons launched into Battlefield 5, and as far as I can tell, people seem to be really enjoying using them. I've spent all of my time in the Pacific Breakthrough playlist that DICE has set up, and most of the time I'm looking at the kill card when I die and I'm seeing the Type 100, the Arasaka, the Browning killing me, so people seem to be having a good time with these weapons because that's pretty much all I'm dying to at the moment. But the weapon that's most interested me is the M1 Garand, the iconic American rifle that people have just been asking for since the launch of Battlefield 5. It's got a really good feeling to it, a really punchy action, and of course, the ping. It's just so satisfying. But there is something else that the Garand does that makes me love it even more in Battlefield 5, and it's kind of converting me as well. Usually when I play Assault, I take a fully automatic weapon so I can be as competitive as possible, but Right now, I'm playing with nothing but the Garand, and it's for one simple reason. Heavy Load. Heavy Load is one of the two Rank 4 specialization options available to you with the M1 Garand, and the other option is adding rifle grenades to your weapon. Now, at Rank 4, you of course have the option to choose either the left-hand side or the right-hand side of the specialization tree, so you get the luxury of finishing off your specialization choices with two very different but equally rewarding options. Now, the rifle grenades, just to talk about those very quickly before we move on, they are really good fun to use. On the Pacific maps, you're going to find plenty of places to fire these things for maximum effect. The cave system on Iwo Jima I definitely recommend going in there and firing a few of those off. You're going to create a lot of chaos because you're just compressing those explosions into a really tight space. You are going to inflict a lot of damage there. And then on the Pacific Storm map, you've got various bunkers, pillboxes, and that small trench network that make for really good spaces to fire off the rifle grenades. It can be really rewarding to fire off one of these things, see it land where you aimed it, and then watch a couple of kills pop up on your screen. I'm not going to deny that it is really good fun to use. But for me, really, the more sensible choice at rank 4 is heavy load, because 90% of the time you are going to be using the Garand for its primary firing mode. You're not looking to fire off rifle grenades all the time, so you might as well boost the primary firing mode of the Garand. Heavy load specialization, it transforms the Garand from pretty much a normal semi-automatic rifle in the assault class into something of an assault class semi-automatic sniper rifle. Applying it changes up the damage model for increased damage at range, or I should say, actually, it's reduced damage drop-off at range. The weapon is already geared up to be a much more deliberate, mid to long range kind of rifle, and that means without heavy load, you're still looking to take down targets at longer distances, but with heavy load applied and that decreased damage drop-off, the Garand moves from a four-shot to a three-shot kill at any range, provided all of the shots hit the torso. If you're able to land a headshot and then a torso shot, you can kill people in just two bullets. This thing is pretty mega. Minimum damage at range with the heavy load applied is 36, which for a semi-automatic rifle is extremely strong. And so the Garand becomes this monster rifle, for long-range shooting. It was already good without heavy load, as I said, but with heavy load, it's even stronger. With that decreased damage drop-off active, the weapon now gives you more confidence than you had before. You can start to take more shots at players at range than perhaps you would have previously, because if you now do hit your target, you are going to inflict more damage. It actually makes the Garand a brilliant finishing weapon, a weapon that can just pick off distant enemies that are already low on health. Sometimes, previously, you might have fired a shot with a fully automatic rifle, and that's going to have a lot more damage drop-off than something like this. You're not going to be able to take that player down. It's still going to take two or three shots at range, but the Garand with heavy load, one shot if they're low health, and that guy's going down. However, as is natural with most weapons in Battlefield 5, you do take some penalties by applying certain specializations to your guns, and it's no different here with heavy load. If DICE had only left it at decreased damage drop-off, then it wouldn't be particularly fair or balanced as a specialization, and knowing me, I'd probably tell DICE to nerf it one day after it's launched. 
<coughs> Fliegerfaust. But as it stands, I think DICE has done a pretty good job at balancing out this extra power that the Garand can have. First of all, with heavy load applied, you are going to see some increased recoil. In between each round that's fired, the weapon is going to kick a little bit more, and that can make keeping your aim on target, especially at longer ranges, a little bit more difficult. Using the iron sights at that point becomes quite a lot more troublesome because the Garand already takes up quite a lot of the center of your screen when you aim in. And so when the recoil starts kicking off because of the heavy load specialization, it can be even more difficult to keep your target visible without it being obscured by the weapon body or the iron sights themselves. That's why most of the gameplay that you're watching, you're seeing me use the three times scope mounted on the side of it because it just helps to increase visibility. You do still have to deal with the increased recoil and that magnification boost up quite a bit compared to iron sights. That is an adjustment that's going to take a short while to get used to, but in my opinion, the trade-up is worth it. The extra magnification gives you greater visibility of enemies at longer ranges, and of course, at longer ranges, that's where the Garand excels anyway. Sure, you are somewhat ruining the classic Garand look by strapping a 3x scope on it, but I'm less concerned with how pretty the weapon looks, and I'm more concerned about how I can get the best out of it, so it's a sacrifice here that I'm willing to make. At least I'm not using a red dot sight, am I right? There is also another trade-off that you have to deal with with the Garand when applying this heavy load specialization. You're going to have to deal with a reduction in the rate of fire. That reduction means you are now even less likely to be able to win a gunfight up close with an enemy who's maybe using an automatic weapon like an SMG, but then I would also argue that at that range, the SMG is designed to win that gunfight regardless. The reduction in rate of fire, that brings the Garand down from 360 to 300 rounds per minute, which doesn't sound like a lot because both of the numbers are still within the 300 range, but in practice, you can feel the difference between the two. That said, I didn't find it particularly impactful since most of the time I was shooting for people at a distance far enough that the rate of fire didn't really come into play. There are moments in the gameplay where you're going to see me fighting mid-range, sometimes even close range, and I'm still able to hold my own and take down enemies by absorbing some of that damage. That's where you feel the rate of fire reduction has its greatest effect. But at longer ranges, when I'm having to deal with a little bit more recoil, I'm taking a bit more time between each shot fired, basically that's the normal thing to do, so it doesn't have a great impact on how I use the M1 Garand. Since applying heavy load and that three times magnification scope, the Garand has been transformed for me. Like I've been saying, it is still a very decent weapon before you make the changes, but it does have some drawbacks compared to other semi-automatic rifles that you could end up picking. It's got less ammunition per clip, that means reloading a little bit more often, or not quite having the rounds that you need to take down the target before you have to reload. And the iron sights, whilst being quite clear, the weapon body, that protrudes up into your screen quite a bit and it blocks your vision more so than other rifles in the game. But instead of thinking of the Garand as just this standard semi-automatic rifle, think of it as a base weapon that can be easily transformed into something else. I mean, for example, if you take the complete opposite options of the specialization tree for the Garand to what I've shown you in this video, then you can transform it from being a standard rifle into one that focuses on hit fire and has the option to fire rifle grenades, which creates this really aggressive, forward-thinking loadout for your assault player. The Garand is a very malleable weapon in the way that it's set up, and the options that you have available make it even more malleable, so it's likely going to keep my interest for a lot longer compared to other weapons that have come before it. So there you have it then. Right now, I highly recommend that you give the heavy load M1 Garand a go. Even if you think it's absolute sacrilege to put any kind of scope on this weapon, then, then simply giving it a go without the scope, that's probably good enough. Just using the iron sights and just have a go and see what you think, because for me it made a massive difference to the weapon and it's got a lot more power over range. Stepping up from a four to a three shot kill to the body and even a two shot kill if you can headshot body shot, that is some serious power in the hands of an assault player. And you can quite quickly clear out a location from distance as the rest of your squad moves up to try and take a capture point. Give it a go. I really don't think you'll be disappointed. 
Thanks very much for watching today. Let me know your thoughts on the M1 Garand down below in the comments, and I'll be back probably next week with a few more videos about some of the other weapons, going into some details and just giving my opinion on these four starter weapons before we start kicking in to some of the Tides of War stuff in a couple of weeks' time when we get even more weapons added for the Pacific. Remember to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it. The dislike button is there as well. And as I say, a massive thanks for watching today and a big thanks for all your support on the Pacific content so far. It seems everyone's really enjoying it, which is absolutely awesome. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.